welcome to PEC Talks. Um, today, I wanted to start out, I am doing something that I very rarely do, which is wearing something other than black. And I just wanted to show off the PEC shirt. I'm gonna stand up a little bit. Um, these are really nice, they're, they're soft. And um, I'm just gonna turn around and see, can I, can you see what the back says all right? I can't tell you. The child is born in the wrong body. <laughs> Um, it's but, true. <laughs> shameless plug for these shirts. Um, I encourage you to get one. And um, those of you who are joining us in protests, we're actually going to try and get you one so that um, everybody will look, you know, have the same look. And so that was our shameless plug for the week. And now we'll get serious. Um, Maria, you have some exciting news. I do. PEC published a book. Um, so just desusty trans and detox, getting your child out of the gender cult is now out there and available. Um, and so I've got really mixed feelings about it though. A lot of people have been saying, oh, congratulations on your book getting out. I hope it, you know, I hope you make a lot of sales. And I'm sitting here thinking, I didn't ever want to write this book. I wish this book hadn't had to be written at all. And whenever somebody tells me they bought it, it's just this little thing twists in my stomach like oh I wish you didn't need it yeah um, but it, it is needed there's there's so many parents dealing with this in their homes with their child being sucked into the cult so thank you I'm grateful to PEC for publishing it and I'm hoping that it's helpful to families and one of the things that I wanted to note is that mm -hmm. all of the profits from this book, you're donating to Partners for Ethical Care so that we can continue to fight for children, which um, we are very grateful for. So thank you, Maria. Well, I don't want to profit off this book. And that's one of the reasons I was so thrilled when PEC said that, you know, they were willing to publish it is we just set it up completely as all the royalties go straight to PEC. Um, they don't come to me at all, and um, I, I want to see PEC have um, more and more ability to do the good work that we're doing and fighting back on, on this ideology. There is a myth that we are being funded by, you know, some kind of, you know, that we're rolling in, in money from <laughs> some, you know, right wing Christian donors. And I just want to dispel that myth that the majority of the funding that we have is actually from ourselves, um, that we, none of us are paid. We're all volunteers. We, for the most part, I think most of us donate between 10 and 20 hours per week to Partners for Ethical Care. And most of us have donated financially as well, because this is something we believe in so much. Um, and, and we hope that we can get you all who are watching this motivated to, um, you know, either, you know, get, get your boots on the ground, start to um, protest, start to write letters, start to do something um, to fight this ideology, because we need your help. Um, and Alex, maybe can you talk about what you did today? Yeah, uh, so I was at the uh, speaking at the WHRC, uh, about Partners for Ethical Care and the number of gender clinics which exist now in the United States, which is 1,000. So way to go, North America. You have just totally shattered the records um, with your gender clinic nonsense. Um, seven years, sorry, nine years um, it's taken to get to 1,000 clinics. Um, so it's really truly frightening. But... I would like to say that um, we've had a great success this week, absolutely phenomenal success. Um, Partners for Ethical Care was able to actually provide evidence to the Arkansas's, um, you know, my, uh, the Partners for Ethical Care and the actual, the gender clinic map was able to provide evidence um, in the Arkansas puberty blockers um, bill because uh, originally there was some lies going around that were started by activists that there were no gender clinics in Arkansas and therefore there was no need to ban the treatment. So I came in there 45 seconds later and was able to dispel that myth uh, with and say that there was actually um, several and that I was able to get prescribed puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones over the phone um, after 30 seconds of, of making a phone call. So that's fantastic. And th this actually has, has a brilliant precedent now 
um, that this has actually happened in Arkansas. And I believe it's not just puberty blockers, it's also cross-sex hormones. Does anybody know? If, uh, yeah, so it's basically, it's it's a, an, an amazing win for us. Um, there's only two, gen, two clinics in Arkansas, but if we could have that done in Texas or you know, some, just somewhere else where we know there's so much of it going on, it's just a complete overnight win. Um, and we've, we're, we're a part of that. So if anybody thinks like, I want to get involved in Partners for Ethical Care, or I want to, I want to speak about um, gender clinics, but it's not going to do anything. Actually, no, it does do something. Um, you know, there's we also had a here. win, I believe, in North yeah. Carolina um, with Saving Women's Sports. So it was close, um, but mm -hmm. we were able to rally lots of people to call um, through mm -hmm. um, different networks, and and they mm -hmm. ended up passing legislation to um, ban biological males from participating in um, female sports. So we're starting to make some headway. There are a number of legislative mm -hmm. efforts that I encourage people to get involved with. Um, and also just to be um, aware of what's happening. This week, there was a, a panel that was um, held by um, Minnesota State University Moorhead. And those of us who watched it were just blown away. It's sort of one of those things where even those of us who think we know what's going on, um, we watch stuff like this. And I'll put a link to it down in the description below, because I really think that that it's important for people to watch stuff like this so that you truly understand the kind of rhetoric that's being taught to our children, such as that, that um, biological essentialism, sort of basically um, what you learned in biology class, the roots of that is actually in white supremacy. Um, <laughs> you know, this is, this is what kids are now being taught, that anybody who, who believes in the, in the idea of, of male and female is actually hugely bigoted, um, that there is no such thing as male and female. Um, these are really dangerous things to be teaching to our young people. And what's, what's really concerning to me is this was hosted by the Women's Center. And when I was in college, the Women's Center was somewhere that women could go to get support, um, especially after sexual assaults or if they were being harassed. I actually was in, <laughs> I went to a very liberal college and I was in a, um, a computer programming class. I was the only female in it. And my teacher actually told me, he suggested that I bake some of the guys some cookies or a cake or something, and they'd be happy to, to help me with my homework. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, this, and, I, and I, um, I went to the Women's Center and it turns out that this particular instructor had said things like this to other women. Um, and they ended up, I believe they fired him. And this is something that the, that the Women's Centers are supporting you know, that's one of the reasons that they were set up was to sort of, you know, help women who had, who had, who had been involved in sexual assaults or, or who were being harassed by faculty or who needed support in other ways. Um, and now we have um, women's centers that are basically telling women that if they are concerned about having males in their locker rooms or restrooms, that they're hateful and bigoted. And this is really concerning because these are young women. Oftentimes it's the first time they've been away from home. They need some support and they don't need someone telling them that their feelings of discomfort are bigoted and hateful. Well, and this program, I mean, watching it was just, I just kept like my jaw kept dropping listening to the things these people were saying and at one point this guy he's a trans he's a guy who thinks he's a girl he was talking about how knowledgeable he is about science and medicine and he said it actually after sex reassignment surgery the the cells like if you have a um you know you have your penis removed and and have a hole made, the cells actually become vagina cells. So he's, <laughs> I know what he said that. That. I was just like, oh. he's saying that your chromosomes actually change after sex. No, no, they don't. No, no. Uh, listening to this stuff, and, and we were all regularly getting booted off the call for asking questions. And, you know, and, and this is something that I wanted to, to read. So the, the, the woman who's the director of the Women's Center there, her name is Danny Bisigliani. And I'm not sure if I said that right. Of course, her pronouns are she, her. And this is the thing that she, she said and she posted a number of times. 
Friendly reminder to, that participants who do not adhere to community agreements and keep their questions respectful will, re, will be removed from the event. Um, I think that meant event maybe. Um, <laughs> for me, I wasn't quite sure. But, but what this basically meant was that any question that in any way did not adhere to their ideology was considered um, disrespectful. And even a simple question, somebody asked, could you define woman? Boot. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I asked after she posted that like the third time, I said, does respectful mean doesn't challenge your perspective? And as soon as I hit send, I was out. Yeah, I mean, I actually, um, I was trying so hard not to not to post anything because I didn't want to get booted. Um, right. And it, and it was so painful because the, the, the outrageous things that they were saying, and again, this is at a university that is publicly funded, that is teaching people this stuff. Um, and, and I think it's really important that we push back. I mean, if there was a university that was teaching, um, you know, gosh, I'm trying to even think something that would be equivalent, um, that is as hateful and damaging as this ideology is, um, we would be up in arms about it but in this well, if there was if there was if they were being taught that all men should be castrated yeah. like all men from birth should be castrated right um i i think there'd be more pushback on that right but they're castrating children right and it's okay and, yeah and that's okay it's okay to castrate children yeah. and 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 that's part of the thing that's so insidious about all this is that it's so focused on um what i noticed and this was the first time that i really saw this because i've been like trying to figure this out for a while but this is the first time that i really made the autogynophile children connection and that is these guys really want children to be medicated because the more they can normalize sort of this whole concept of gender fluidity and transgenderism then they don't get questioned and so these that's and that's what it seems like their goal is is the you know there were a couple of clear you know <laughs> These are guys who are who are claiming to be women, and if they can if they can normalize it, then 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 they then they don't get challenged anymore. And they're using our children yeah. to do this. And Alex, you can speak on this more because I think you understand the connection far better than I do. Yeah. So like the, these these full time female impersonators, um, like the ones we had on the panel, um, they they want to use um, their theory of feminine essence. Like they they believe that they have this feminine uh, soul um, to to, uh, and they're using children to justify their nonsense. And you know, Richard Levine is like a really good example of that. He's championing, he's championing puberty, puberty blockers to affirm his own nonsense. Because if he really kind of goes back home at night and thinks, I'm dressing up as a woman every day and I feel kind of ridiculous, that would be jarring. So what is he doing instead? He's, you know, kind of, I guess, as part of his narcissistic, autogynophilic personality, um, he's using children to validate his own um, nonsense. Yeah, and I think that's a really good way of putting it. And that's that's a connection that I think it's hard to make because it is it is confusing because you see these, you know, these uh, kind of ridiculous adults who are, you know, they're sort of talking about being, um, you know, these are adult males who are talking about being, um, you know, picked on and threatened and it's not fair and, and, and how harassed they are and how bullied they are. And they do these little like, like poor me, it's so not fair. These are, these are guys who are wanting to get into women's spaces and are doing whatever they can to, um, to convince society that they are the victims here. These are men um, that are undermining women's consent, that are taking away spaces that we fought so hard for, that are taking away rights that we fought so hard for. And they're using our children to do it. I can't think of anything like, ugh. <laughs> it just kind of makes my skin crawl. And I They're so all, disgusting. Yeah, and all through this, the thing that has baffled me so much is why are women letting them do it? Yeah. Why are there so many women going along with this? When I first started finding out what was going on in the schools, 
that our that our girls were being preyed upon, that that our girls' private spaces were being invaded by men. My first thought was all of my feminist friends. And I wouldn't necessarily have called myself a feminist before now, but I've got some friends who definitely I would consider very liberal feminist, radical feminist. And I thought they are not going to stand for this. And primarily they're the ones who are telling me what a what a homophobe, transphobe, and bigot I am for standing up to men. I'm like, isn't feminism about protecting women? I, I'm still flabbergasted. It went it went really like it goes so deep as well. Um, they they try to they try to make all kinds of comparisons with um, these these like insane men's rights activists, women, not even gonna call them feminists. Um, they're making all kinds of claims, like the way that we want to keep um, men out of our spaces is like Nazi Germany mm -hmm. and is like Jim Crow laws. Yeah. I mean, so they're making these wildly offensive claims, wildly offensive to justify it. And um, I actually felt like when we were asking our questions, the, pa the, the, the female panelists kind of looked a little embarrassed. I, I, I thought there was something there um, that maybe they, they were, especially one of them just, just kind of, they were also conceding. They were also handing over their, they were saying, okay, I finished speaking. And then they were giving it over to the guy. And it was all kind of very performative and sort of ridiculous. But then let's remember what would happen to these women if they were to come out and say trans women are men and this is wrong. They would lose their jobs. So how much do you yeah. think that they're just kind of going along and performing? It's hard to say, to be honest. Maybe they're hostage. Maybe they're being held you well, know, economically um, hostage. Yeah, um, and there is that um, that syndrome um, of where you know when you're held hostage, you start to um, befriend the the person that that is holding you hostage. And I almost wonder if that's what's happening here, because at one point, one of the women actually made the absurd claim that that when trans women finally have have all the rights that they you know want <laughs> that we will all be more free and i can't think of a more absurd claim for a woman to make um again these are i think it's called the stockholm syndrome this kind of mm -hmm. reminds me of someone who's been so completely mm -hmm. um brainwashed who's who's being held hostage who's being threatened yeah. by men and being told if you mm -hmm. do not buy into this ideology you are going to lose your job. You might lose your kids. You might lose your home. You are going to lose your livelihood. You better buy into this ideology. Um, and mm -hmm. so, so again, women are um, under under control of these men. At one point, um, you know, one of them even almost like. I can't even remember the wording that she used, but she almost like humbly, you know, humbly handled, handed it over like, well, well, this is what I feel, but I'm going to, I'm going to hand it over to these trans women because they really know. Um, again, this is like women who are subjugating themselves and, and giving their authority and power over to men in a way that was, um, I found it. Um, quite disturbing, really. That, um, and again, this one of the women is in charge of the the women's center, and she was the one who was systematically removing those of us women who were asking these questions that were very valid questions. You know, at one point, I asked the question, the the question that finally got me booted, the, the only question I asked, and the question that got me booted was why is it um, okay to use turf when the people who are using the term turf are using it to systematically bully people and often advocate abuse and rape and murder of those they consider to be TERFs. And again, rather than addressing these questions, we just get booted out. We are, um, our voices are being silenced under the name of, um, you know, we're, we're being considered akin to, um, to, to, to white supremacists, which um, again, this is a, an amazing, yeah. um, way of gaslighting and controlling people that that these bullies are now saying that women are the ones who are um are, who are the bullies here one of the also i really said, oh i was just gonna say one of the things that was said that bothered me too they did address free speech 
And although they, they opened it by saying, yes, free speech is very important. We want to make sure there's free speech, but let me turn it over to, you know, and they turned it over to the men. And what the men agreed on is that, yes, free speech is very important, but you're responsible for your speech. And if you say something that's irresponsible, then there will be consequences for that. And, and they did not answer my question about what are appropriate consequences. And I brought up Maya Forstater. Um, the UK lost her job as a tax analyst for tweeting, men are not women. And, and she lost her, her job and livelihood for that. Was that appropriate? Mm -hmm. Was that, is that an appropriate consequence? Um, they didn't really address free speech at all. They gave it lip service, but then, then, um, supported their own willingness to to squelch free speech and called it a consequence so mm -hmm. basically they're saying also if you don't agree with us um we're going to silence you and that's a consequence mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. when you concede to the mob um when you concede to the mob in any way so let's say if we were to turn around tomorrow and say, okay, trans women are trans women, but, you know, uh, like in some weird way, but, you know, they can be in our prisons, but they have to have proper surgeries. It would never be enough. So it doesn't, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? If we were to concede in some way to the mob, it, they, it would never be enough for them. They want total and utter, um, you know, just, just same status as women and, and many cases i think they want better treatment to be honest because if they were really um to get you know real treatment <laughs> women they probably wouldn't like it too much well that reminds me of the of the man who dresses up as women who was um he was harassed um and he was very upset about it um yeah. he was he was cat called <laughs> and he was upset about it i'm like hey guess what you want to be treated like a woman, Buster. This is being treated like a woman. They don't want to be treated like women. <laughs> no, he went, that guy went and complained to the police and the guy who cat called him got fined like $500. <laughs> Has any guy yeah, he did. fined for cat calling a woman? I've had some- I could get some money today. He said to me. And, mm -hmm. and what I get told mm -hmm. is, oh, just ignore it. Or, oh, it's a compliment. Take compliment. it as a compliment. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's amazing to me that, um, and and that's that's ultimately the point here is that they don't want to be treated like women. They want some kind of higher status, um, like you said, Alex. That that they want to be, and and and, and I see this often um, how they brag about their breasts being better breasts than our breasts, how they're prettier than we are. I even saw a treat, um, you know, a treat recently um, from, from, you know, this, this one trans identified male. And he was talking about how, you know, cis women, cis women were going to start um, wearing makeup to, to sort of pretend like they had an Adam's apple and stubble because they were going to realize that, that trans women were so much more attractive than actual women are. I mean, it's like they, yeah. they, they I think Alex, you said this in our last talk they want their cake and they want to eat it too it's like they want they want to be transgender and have all the benefits of being transgender and have that special category of treatment but then they also want to say that they're fully women and be treated like women which is different than the category of trans and so you can't be both you can't be both transgender and woman at the same time and that's the crux of the problem well, I, I definitely can say the reason that the panel upset me is because I was really jealous of those two trans identified <laughs> males. I was jealous and I wanted to look like them. And they that's why so I wrote pretty. my transphobic comments. But they were so pretty, <laughs> weren't they? I know, oh, sure. just just love. And I know we shouldn't make fun of the way that people look, but I make also fun of the way that they were acting and the things that they were saying. So, you know, they really don't, not deserving of my respect. Well, and um, Alex, it's actually but interesting it is, because uh, um, when I was editing the video, I actually had thought about editing in, you know, zooming in on each of the speakers, because a lot of times that can be powerful to have the, the, um, the video focus on each of the speakers. But I realized that the way that people were acting was so fascinating. When they weren't speaking, they looked so bored. And like, I mean, the the one Faye, he was like, uh, like, I mean, this is in a way that I've never seen a woman act like that. <laughs> it's like, I think he was doing it. 
The first time I saw him do it is actually when I wrote my comment. Oh, so he was giving um, you about, a little, you know, a microaggression. I thought that. You would call it. <laughs> well, I, I wrote that the normalization of men's sexual fetishes played out in a society is, is eroding our privacy further. And that was the first time I saw him go, Oh, I think you I think he was upset at the because all of the messages were from, you know, uh, people who were critical of this. And I think that for them, they really didn't like it. Um, you know, they could have had like they could have named their panel, okay, how to make things better for trans women. But no, they made it about the the, the turfs. And by the way, everybody's a turf. Okay. Yeah. And the, the Marxist feminists are turfs, and the lesbians are turfs, and the Christians are turfs, and the uh, everybody's everybody's a turf. And I think <laughs> it's that's a really good such point. a ridiculous thing. Yeah. And there was actually one woman, um, you know, trans-identified woman on there, and she spent most of the time just petting her cat and looking kind of timid. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was a very unfortunate topic and, and unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Like you said, um, they could have actually accomplished something if they had focused on, you know, sort of like, um, you know, they could have talked about the ways in which things are difficult for them as um, cross-dressers. That would have been something that they could ta have talked about um, that, that I think I would have respected a lot more if they had said, you know, we are tra um, uh, transvestites or transsexuals and um, this, these are ways that things are difficult for us because um, of, of how we like to, to dress. I would have had a lot more respect for a panel like that than one that just um, explicitly was attacking women like us who are trying to stand up for our protections and rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just an abs. It was just total garbage. Total yeah. garbage. And I mean, it was just wants... really. Um, anyone? I'm just going to mention as well. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> and if anybody who uh, is 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 concerned about any of this and really wants to learn more, um, can come to Partners for Ethical Care. I think it would be very um, interesting for you, even if you don't have a if if you do have a child who's involved in this, definitely get desis, detrans, and detox. Um, as a kind of a companion and a help guide. But even if you don't have a, a child that's, that's wrapped up in this, you can still gain a lot of insight into really uh, reading, reading the book. Um, if, you've, if you're affected by this, if you're kind of on a, a college campus and they've done a panel about, you know, um, maligning women and you feel uh, this is not right, you know, come to Partners for Ethical Care. We want to hear it. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your stories. And we want to do something about this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if, if anyone's interested in seeing the video of the turf event, mm -hmm. it's on our YouTube channel. Um, we've got it taped. Thank you for taping it, Erin. And and you can you can see the whole uh, ugly mess. Yeah, and I think it's really informative to watch it because um, it's important to know we're not just making this up. This is really, this is what kids are learning when they go to college, and this is what we're fighting against. Um, we're not hateful women. Um, we are women who are deeply concerned about the ideology that's being taught to our kids starting in kindergarten now and um, going up through um, college. So again, if you, if you um, are concerned about this, please come to Partners for Ethical Care. We have lots of different ways you can volunteer. And um, I would encourage you to get Maria's book, even if you're not a parent, maybe donate it to a library or, um, you know, give it to give it to somebody who who, you know, maybe is unaware of what's going on, because I think that there are so many people who really they have no idea this is going on. And if they find out that um, that that people in universities are actually being taught that the concept of biology is rooted in um, white supremacy. <laughs> I mean, these are pretty absurd claims and very serious claims. Um, and I don't think the biology department is teaching yeah. that. I no. don't think they're learning that in the biology department. They're learning that in the gender studies department, Yeah. which makes me wonder why is the gender studies department discussing what happens in the biology department? 
Right. And how is it that the biology department is okay with this? Because the biology department's um, being undermined, basically. What they're teaching the, the students is, is being undermined by um, a few people who have this ideology, um, this, this very dangerous ideology that mm -hmm. they're spreading across the campus. So um, again, yeah. Cra crazy religious way. belief, actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs> Thanks, ladies.